हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू अफेयर्स क्लाउड माय नेम इज विकास सो फ्रेंड्स वी हैव एन एप्लीकेशन बाय द नेम कैरियर्स क्लाउड विच यू कैन गो एंड डाउनलोड थ्रू द प्ले स्टोर एंड वंस यू हैव डाउनलोडेड यू कैन लॉग इन विद योर जीमेल आईडी एंड व्हाई आई एम सजेस्टिंग यू दिस एप्लीकेशन बिकॉज दिस इज द वन स्टॉप सोल्यूशन फॉर ऑल द करंट अफेयर दिस इज द बेस्ट ऑफ द बेस्ट एप्लीकेशन एंड द प्लेटफॉर्म वेर यू कैन एनहेंस योर लर्निंग थ्रू हेल्प here you will be provided with multiple courses here you will be provided with multiple options of quizzes and even you here you will be provided current affairs on daily basis pdfs and quizzes will be provided to you on daily basis both in hindi as well as english here you will be provided current affairs with weekly basis and monthly basis also here remember once you have done watching our video then you can log in through this application take out the pdf read that pdf and go through the quizzes that will enhance your preparation same you have to do for weekly and same you have to do for the monthly also in monthly you will be provided with the top 100 important questions pdf and video also that will enhance your learning and it will be a very benefit and beneficial and important video for the revision perspective and not just this friends apart from this we also provide you banking and economic questions we provide you state current affairs such as of uttarakhand up tripura telangana and many more not just this apart from this we also provide you topic wise current affairs and the topics that we are providing you are really important these topics are such as national affairs international affairs important days sports defense science and technology apps and web portals obviously these are the important topics that are being asked in various exams across india so these are the topics that are must and should be covered and will be beneficial for the preparation of the students hello everyone so in this video we will be discussing important current affairs of 20th of october this session will be quite interesting so do pay attention till the end let's start first we are discussing about the highlights of the 9th g20 parliamentary speaker summit that was recently held in dwarka new delhi and the location where was this held was it is important so take a note of it it is the india international convention and expo center that is known by the name yasho bhumi right and we have discussed that that what was the name of the india international convention and expo center it is yasho bhumi where is this located it is in dwarka new delhi and here only remember the 9th g20 uh ninth g20 parliamentary speaker summit was held and this is also known by the name p20 correct it was held from 13 to 14th of october and this was the first p20 summit hosted by india in cooperation with india inter parliamentary union under the border framework of india's g20 presidency this p20 summit was inaugurated by narendra modi prime minister of india at iicc on 13th of october correct mark this then if we talk about this ipu inter parliamentary union where is the headquarter geneva switzerland headquarter is in 18 uh, established in 1889 headquarter in geneva switzerland right so this is your g20 parliamentary speaker summit held at yashobhumi on 13th and 14th of october and this was the first p20 summit hosted by india on the lines of ipu under the india's g20 presidency and who inaugurated it it was inaugurated by prime minister narendra modi the next thing is the theme of this particular forum it was parliaments for one earth one family one future i repeat parliaments for one earth one family one future this is the theme for this particular forum right and next 10th p20 this was the 9th p20 summit right so the next 10th p20 summit will be hosted by brazil it will be hosted by brazil in 2024 then this particular p20 summit reflects india's commitment to democratic values international cooperation and joint parliamentary efforts also this p20 serves as a platform for parliamentarians to exchange ideas and approaches in the promotion of sustainable living next next is iica and nicf they signed an mou to synergize the professional capabilities i repeat iica that is not icca it is iica that is indian institute of corporate affairs and national institute of communication finance they have recently signed a memorandum of understanding and it is to promote the exchange of knowledge and resources between these institutes for conducting research training capacity building etc 
right this mou will cover a wide range of topics for knowledge sharing such as finance restructuring turnaround competition law corporate law corporate governance insolvency and bankruptcy leadership right etc this collaboration aims to develop the skills and knowledge of indian post and telecom accounts and finance services officers right as the name suggests remember this mou was basically for what for knowledge sharing right to promote the exchange of knowledge and resources between these two institutes correct then if we talk about iica right this was an institution no autonomous institution established by ministry of corporate affairs and who is the director general here and chief executive officer praveen kumar headquarter is in gurugram haryana and it was established in 2008 then if we talk about nicf who is the director general here avdesh kumar headquarter new delhi and it was established in 2007 and this mou was basically to sign knowledge sharing and to share resources between these two institutes moving on next next is woah what is woah stands for that is your world organization for animal health they have approved india's self declaration of freedom from highly pathogenic uh, highly pathogenic avian influenza i repeat woah they have approved india's self declaration of freedom from highly pathogenic avian influenza correct mark this this is known as or we can say wh has recently approved india's self declaration of freedom from bird flu from bird flu correct and in certain areas such as maharashtra tamil nadu up and chatisgarh so up tamil nadu maharashtra and chatisgarh this recognition by woh signifies that india is dedicated to international biosecurity standards and this recognition is composed to boost india's poultry industry by enhancing the export potential of poultry products such as your meats and eggs right so woh remember they have recently declared or they have recently approved india's declaration of freedom from bird flu then this remember aviation influenza or bird flu it is a highly contagious viral disease this impacts domestic and wild birds and it can occasionally infect mammals including humans there are many strains of this bird flu and it can be generally classified into two that is your low pathogenicity aviation influenza and high pathogenicity aviation influenza in india it was first discovered in the state of maharashtra in 2006 and since then india has experienced annual outbreaks of this bird flu in different regions causing significant economic losses right and now recently woh has approved india self declaration of freedom from this highly pathogenic aviation influenza that is also known as bird flu next next is our education minister dharmendra pradhan has launched ncert's web portal that is apna chandrayaan and we know what is chandrayaan 3 was recently launched right and this module correct this ncert's web portal that is apna chandrayaan this is for school students in new delhi right this portal was developed by ncert question can be asked that who developed this web portal it was developed by ncert and ncert remember it is an autonomous organization under the ministry of education here dharmendra pradhan ji also launched 10 special modules offering a comprehensive perspective of the isro's chandrayaan 3 mission for students and this module encompasses scientific technological and social aspect as well as the emotional journey and team spirit of the scientists involved in this particular mission then coming back remember as the name suggests well, chandrayaan it is basically talked here it will be talked about chandrayaan 3 as with this india became the fourth nation to land on moon and first nation to land on the south pole of the correct so this portal was developed by ncert and it was launched by dharmendra pradhan our education minister here this portal will feature various interactive quizzes puzzles for school students and it has a set of coloring booklets dot to dot activities picture builders etc and this is a user friendly web portal that will enhance the accessibility for self guided learning among students and students who will secure Mo above seventy percent will receive digital certificates, and age appropriate books will be presented to the first one thousand winners. Correct. Then to inspire the youth to explore the 
science and technology as we just saw the 10 special modules have been launched and they have been launched in multiple languages these modules will cover a wide range of information and are designed to offer insights and motivate the stakeholders and the students the interactive and engaging content uh, on these modules they have very different graphics photographs illustration and this will attract the students from first to 12th class of right and also remember the content here will be translated into 22 languages with the help of new technology and there are 10 special modules for the same correct so this is a web portal apna chandrayaan launched by dharmendra pradhan and it was developed by ncert next next is india's first ever indigenous ac and dc combined charging connector standard for lev lev is your light electric vehicle correct so bis the bureau of indian standards right and that is the national statute uh, national standard body of india they have recently approved the first ever indigenous ac and dc combined charging connector standard for light electric vehicle it is also the world's first charging standard that combines ac and dc charging for small electric vehicles such as electric scooters motorcycles three wheelers and quad cycles and it is designed and engineered in india the new standard is based on ether energy's charging connector if we talk about bis what is bis that is your bureau of indian standard who is the director general here pramod kumar tiwari who is the president here piyush goyal headquarter it is in new delhi and it was established or it was founded in 1987 and bis was established under the bis act of 2016 so coming back right bis it is a national standard body of india and they have recently developed india's first ever ac and dc combined charging connector standard for lev right and the standard here is is 17017 this is the certification here correct moving on next is pilot license now valid for 10 years as per the civil aviation ministry i repeat recently the validity of pilot license has been increased from 5 years to 10 years now and ministry of civil aviation notified the amendment rules of this correct and under this it stated that for the validity of the airline transport like pilot lines airport i repeat airline transport pilot license and your commercial pilot license the validity for these has been increased from 5 years to 10 years correct i repeat the validity for the airline transport pilot license and commercial pilot license has increased from 5 to 10 years correct and this amendment is in line with the government's effort to further improve the ease of doing business in the aviation sector Uh, the aim here was to basically to reduce the administrative burden on pilots and aviation authorities like dgca and it will promote a more streamlined and efficient licensing process the amendment is in line with the government's effort to further improve the ease of doing business as we just saw in the aviation sector correct so it has been increased from 5 to 10 years this is important that you should know moving on dolr and nrsc they signed an mou to monitor WDC PMKSY 2.0. What is this? So first of all, remember DOLR. This is your Department of Land Resources. NRSC. It is your National Remote Sensing Center. They have signed a memorandum of understanding to monitor the WDC. That is your Watershed Development Corporation of Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana 2.0. I repeat, DOLR and NRSC. They signed an MOU to monitor the. Watershed Development Component of Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana 2.0. Correct. Mark this. This is important, right? And under this, remember, high resolution satellites for all the WDC 2.0 projects across India will be provided. A customized software tool on the Bhuvan for monitoring online image comparison and visualization of the project reports, and customized Bhuvan web page Srishti for this particular. scheme was launched and a customized mobile application drishti for field data collection and data transfer for bhuvan was launched correct so coming back remember it is this dolr that is your department of land resources and national remote sensing center that is nrsc they signed an mou to monitor the watershed development component of the pradhan mantri kishi sachai yojana 2.0 and it was done using the geospatial applications 
दिस इवेंट विटनेस द लॉन्च ऑफ मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन दृष्टि टू पॉइंट ओ एंड वेब पोर्टल दृष्टि टू पॉइंट ओ सो टू वेब पोर्टल्स वर लॉन्च हेयर दृष्टि टू पॉइंट ओ एंड सृष्टि टू पॉइंट ओ सो बोथ ऑफ दैम वर रिसेंटली लॉन्च हेयर मार्क दिस ऑल्सो नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इज मीना क्लाइमेट वीक वॉज ऑब्जर्व फ्रॉम एट टू ट्वेल्थ ऑफ अक्टूबर आई रिपीट मीना मीना वॉट डज दिस स्टैंड फॉर मिडल ईस्ट एंड नॉर्थ अफ्रीका एम ई एन ए मीना मीना क्लाइमेट वीक दिस टू प्लेस फ्रॉम एट टू ट्वेल्थ ऑफ अक्टूबर राइट एंड इट टू प्लेस वेयर द लोकेशन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट हेयर दैट इज रियाद सऊदी अरेबिया right and this is the second of four regional climate week held in 2023 this mina climate week is particularly significant as it precedes cop 28 that is your conference of parties 28 right this cop 20 plate is scheduled to be held in dubai next month in november 2023 correct this mina climate week was divided into four areas that is your energy systems cities and urban development land ocean food water and society's health livelihood and economies correct so coming back remember this mina middle east and north africa climate week this was observed from 8 to 12th of october and the location where was this observed is riyadh saudi arabia and this was before cop 28 that was scheduled to be held in dubai 2023 that is next month in dubai correct then during this we will be talking about various green hydrogen projection right as we know national hydrogen mission is of india then supply chain development then we will be talking about various stakeholders in the paris agreement we will be talking about various cop 28 insights and the processes that are going to be held there then apart from this remember this was organized by undp unep world bank correct and apart from this it will receive support from other islamic part development bank also from irnea that is your international renewable energy agency that is irnea will also be participating here so we were in this particular mina climate week a collaboration was seen from different segments correct next next is economic outlook survey was released by fiki what is this first of all remember according to the economic outlook survey that was released by fiki here india's annual gdp growth rate for the financial year 23 24 is projected to be around 6.3% i repeat the gdp growth rate india's gdp growth rate for the financial year 23 24 is projected to be around 6.3% with a minimum 6% and maximum 6.6% respectively then remember the expected growth rate for agriculture and allied activities is 2.7% which is lower than 4% last year this is due to el nino effect which has affected the distribution of rainfall during the monsoon season and the industry and service sector are expected to grow by 5.6% and 7.3% respectively in 23 24 correct then if we talk about cpi data that is for inflation consumer price index based inflation for this fiscal year 23 24 is around 5.5% with a minimum and maximum range of 5.3% till 5.7% and the target of rbi is to bring it close to 4% and the expected range is 2 to 6% correct what is the repo rate here rbi expected to maintain their repo rate at 6.5% till the end of fiscal year 23 24 remember this right next msde what is this msde it is your ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship they have launched india skills i repeat recently dharmendra pradhan have launched india skills 23 24 that is india's most significant national skill competition program and he also facilitated the winners of the 46th world skills competition that was held between 7 september to 26th of october november in 2022 and in this it was held across 15 countries here in this particular world skills competition that was the 46th edition of the world skill competition what was the rank of india india stood at 11th position here two silver medals three bronze medals and a total of 13 medallions for excellence were won here and in 2019 in this world skills competition india scored 13th position and now in 2022 india secured 
फिफ्टींथ इंडिया सिक्योर्ड इलेवेंथ पोजिशन करेक्ट मार्क दिस नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ इंटरनेशनल ओलंपिक कमिटी दिस हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी फर्स्ट सेशन विल बी हेल्ड इन मुंबई महाराष्ट्र एंड रिमेंबर दिस वॉज इनोग्रेटेड बाय होम इट वॉज इनोग्रेटेड बाय द प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी दैन रिमेंबर दिस इज द सेकेंड एडिशन ऑफ दिस इंटरनेशनल ओलंपिक कमिटी सेशन दैट इज गोइंग टू बी हेल्ड इन इंडिया फर्स्ट वर्ड फर्स्ट वॉज हेल्ड इन नाइनटीन एटी थ्री एंड नाउ इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री वी आर ऑब्जर्विंग द सेकेंड आफ्टर फोर्टी ईयर्स The next thing, remember, IOC, International Olympic Committee, they have suspended Russian Olympic Committee for violating the Olympic Charter. Apart from this, during this session, it was declared that five new games will be added to the LA Olympic Games that is going to be held in 2028. And these five sports are T20 cricket, softball, baseball, flag football, lacrosse, and squash. These are the five games that will be going to be added in the. LA Olympic Games that is Los Angeles Olympic Games that are going to be held in 2028 right so what are the things to remember this is the 141st session this is the second edition of this session going to be held in india first was in 1983 now in 2023 this 141st session of ioc was inaugurated by prime minister narendra modi and how many games will be added five new games will be added to the LA Olympic Games for the 2028 if we talk about IOC who is the president thomas beck headquarters is in lausanne switzerland and it was established in 1894 the next thing remember a book was recently released or launched during the man ki baat show that is hosted by or that is a radio show that is hosted by prime minister narendra modi every month and remember the name of the book here is igniting collective goodness man ki baat at the rate of 100 i repeat igniting collective goodness man ki baat at the rate of 100 this is the name of the book that was recently launched by prime minister narendra modi and this book basically is about the journey of prime minister narendra modi's 100 episodes of man ki baat and the impact of these episodes on the indian society then this book was published by westland publications limited and this is the third book of the westland publication limited in this particular series that captures the journey of the prime minister narendra modi's man ki baat man ki baat is broadcasted on all india radio and doordarshan on the sunday of every month that is the last sunday of every month this program was launched on 3rd october 2014 and it has reached 100 episodes on 30th of april 2020 next next we are talking about national security guard raising day so when do we observe this national security guard raising day it is observed on 16th of october and this is the 39th edition of national security guard raising day that was observed in 2023 correct 16th edition it is and for the first time it was observed in 18 uh, 1984 it was observed for the first time correct and this day is basically the 39th edition of the national security raising day observed on 16th of october next we are talking about kati bihu kati bihu is a festival that is observed in the state of assam kati bahu right that is observed in the state of assam and it was observed on 18th of october kati bahu is also known by the name kongali bahu kongali bihu right kongali bihu or also known as kati bihu this is an annual assamese festival that is celebrated on the first day of the kati month in the assamese calendar and it coincides in with the mid october this kati bahu is celebrating during the relocation of the rice sapling which is observed with greater enthusiasm and fervor this kati bahu was observed on 18th of october in the year 2023 mark this correct and in 2022 it was celebrated on 18th of october and in 2024 it will be observed on 17th of october here kati kati means to cut right and kongali means poor correct they uh, the people of assam will light up the lamps outside their homes as well as in the paddy fields in the evening praying for a better crop in the next season and that is the reason we observe this festival then this festival is observed in three important cultural sets that is mag bihu bohag bihu and kati bihu correct 
सो दिस इज योर काटी बिहू फेस्टिवल ऑब्जर्व इन असम एंड दिस ईयर इट वॉज ऑन एटीन ऑफ अक्टूबर दिस फेस्टिवल इज ऑल्सो नोन एज कोंगाली बिहू नेक्स्ट इज चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ कर्नाटका लॉन्च एन एम्बलम टू मार्क द गोल्डन जुबली ऑफ रीनेमिंग ऑफ द स्टेट करेक्ट हु इज द चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ कर्नाटका सिदारमैया हैज अनवेल्ड एन एम्बलम ऑफ कर्नाटका सांब्रमा फिफ्टी इन अ प्रोग्राम ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बेंगलोर कर्नाटका राइट द लॉन्च ऑफ दिस एम्बलम मार्क्स द गोल्डन जुबली ऑफ द रीनेमिंग ऑफ माइसोर स्टेट एज कर्नाटका राइट माइसोर स्टेट एज कर्नाटका Correct and when was it? It was on first of November in nineteen seventy three. Correct. I repeat, the renaming of Mysore status Karnataka was made by then Chief Minister D. Devraj Oras. Right. It was made by D. Devraj Oras, and it was on first of November nineteen seventy three that this renaming was done. And recently, Chief Minister of Karnataka, Sidaramaiya ji, has recently launched an emblem to mark the golden jubilee of the renaming of the state, as the golden jubilee means. 50 years has been completed this is to mark 50 years of renaming of the government of karnataka right the celebration will be titled hesariya hesara yitu karnataka usi ragali kannada i repeat hesara yitu karnataka usi ragali kannada this is the name of the celebration that will be named it correct so friends 50 years of renaming of karnataka will be observing on 1st of november 1970 uh first uh, because the renaming took place on 1st of november 1973 so in the year 2023 it will be 50 years that is your golden jubilee of the renaming of karnataka from mysore state to karnataka right so these are your important current affairs for the day now let's go for a quick one liner revision highlights of the 9th g20 parliamentary speaker summit hosted by parliament of india iica and nicf signed an mou to synergize professional capabilities WOH approves India self declaration of freedom from HPAI Next Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan launched NCERT's web portal Apna Chandrayaan for students Next is BIS has approved India's first ever indigenous AC and DC combined charging connector standard for LEV that is light electric vehicles Next Aircraft rules amended for 1937 and recently pilot license has been increased or the validity for the pilot license has increased from 5 to 10 years. Next DOLR and NRSC they signed an MOU to monitor WDC and uh, WDC PMKSY 2.0. Then Mina Climate Week it was hosted by Saudi Arabia and it was hosted ahead of the COP28 that will be held in Dubai. Then Fiki Economic Outlook Survey was released, and here the GDP growth rate was projected at six point three percent. Next, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship Dharmendra Pradhan launched India Skills Twenty Three Twenty Four, and facilitates the World Skill Twenty Twenty Two winners. CCI has approved the merger of IDFC Limited with IDFC First Bank. One forty first session of the IOC held in Mumbai. Five additional sports added to the Twenty Twenty Eight Summer Olympics. Next. Blue Craft Digital Foundation launched five uh, books on, uh, not five. Blue Craft Digital Foundation launched book on PM Modi's radio show that is Man Ki Baat. Thirty ninth raising day of NSG was observed on sixteenth of October. Kati Bihu celebrated across Assam on eighteenth of October. And Chief Minister of Karnataka Sidaramaiah launched an emblem to mark Golden Jubilee of renaming state. So that's all for the day, friends. Now let's move to some revision current affairs. Next is three five Gorkha rifles of the Indian Army won gold in the Cambrian Patrol 2023 military exercise that was held in UK. I repeat, three five Gorkha rifles, that is the Frontier Force team, they have won the gold medal here. Correct, and it is for the Indian Army. This was during the Cambrian Patrol competition 2023. This is an international military exercise that was organized in Wales, UK. It was from 6 to 15th of October. And in this, the gold medal was received by three five Gorkha rifles, and sixty seven Punjab regiment of Pakistan Army received the silver medal here. So, who won the gold? Gorkha rifles of Indian Army and sixty seven Punjab regiment of Pakistan Army won the silver medal in this Cambrian Patrol uh, exercise 
that was an international military exercise and the location where this was held is uk and it was hosted also by united kingdom only correct then who won the bronze medal here so remember british army here won the bronze medal in this particular exercise moving on next next is ministry of defense signed a contract ministry of defense signed a contract with cochin shipyards limited for the upgradation of ins bayas now the question can be asked is that ministry of defense they recently signed a contract with which organization for the upgradation of ins bayas now the question can be asked in all different ways right it can be asked that recently cochin shipyards limited they signed mou with which organization or signed a contract with which ministry for the upgradation of INS Bias or this can be asked that Ministry of Defense and Cochin Shipyards Limited they signed a contract for the upgradation of which Indian naval ship it is INS Bias and this will be upgraded at a cost of 313.42 crore rupees then this INS Bias this is a first Brahmaputra class frigate that will be repowered from steam to diesel propulsion after completing the mid life upgrade and repowering it will be back in action in 2026 correct originally this was inducted into the indian navy in 2005 it was built by grse that is garden reach ship builders and engineers limited in kolkata west bengal so this is your ins bias that will be recently upgraded and for this ministry of defense they signed an contract with cochin shipyards limited then friends apart from this there is one more news that you can remember recently it was your ministry of defense they also signed a contract with madgaon dock ship builders limited and this was to construct the first icg training ship right this is for the first icg training ship and for this it was ministry of defense that signed a contract with madgaon dock ship builders limited that is in mumbai maharashtra and this ICG training ship will be built at a cost of 310 crore rupees moving on if we talk about cochin shipyards limited who is the chairman and managing director madhu s nair madhu s nair headquarters is in cochin kerala and it was established in 1972 if we talk about madgaon dock ship builders limited sanjeev singhal is the current chairman and managing director mumbai maharashtra is the headquarter and this company was incorporated in 1934 mercer fcfa institutes global pension index 2023 was released and here the rank of india is 45 and netherland has topped it so remember this is the 15th edition of the mercer cfa institute global pension index right institute global pension index this is the 15th edition of it it is released by mercer correct then remember in this the rank of india is 45 out of 47 countries and the country that secured the top position is netherland correct here we can say netherland with an overall score of 85 uh, 85 points right was on the top position and india being on the 47th position correct if we talk about mercer who releases this institute global pension index if we are talking about this mercer who is the chief executive officer here martin furland headquarters in new york and it was established in 1945 right next is hollywood actor michael douglas has received satyajit ray lifetime achievement award at the iffi 2020 So I repeat, American actor and producer Michael Douglas, as you can see him in the picture, was will be honored with the Satyajit Ray Lifetime Achievement Award, and he will be honored with this during the fifty fourth International Film Festival of India that will be held in Goa, and it will be from twenty to twenty eighth of November in twenty twenty three. Correct. The announcement was made by Union Minister Anurag Singh Thakur. and here if we talk about him he has won the academy award in 1988 and the golden globe in 1988 for his role 
in Wall Street. As the producer of the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, he won the Academy Award in 1975 and he won the Emmy Award that is the outstanding lead actor in a miniseries of a, or a movie for Behind the Candelabra in 2013. Correct. So these are the awards that you can remember regarding him because he will be recently receiving Satyajit Ray Lifetime Achievement Award, and this will be awarded to him during the IFFI that will be going to held in Goa from twenty to twenty eighth of November. Next, next is M E A, that is Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Arinandan Bagchi has appointed India's ambassador to UN in Geneva. I repeat. Arinandan Bagchi, as you can see him in the picture, right, and he has been appointed as the next permanent representative of India to the UN and the international organization in Geneva, Switzerland. Here, Arin Arindam Bagchi is set to take over the post from Indra Mani Pandey, the current incumbent of Indian envoy to the UN in Geneva. And here, remember, Indra Mani Pandey. has been holding the position since september 2020 and now is set to return to new delhi after a 3 year term if we talk about him arindam uh, arindam bagchi he is a 1995 batch ifs officer who took over as spokesperson of mea in march 2021 correct earlier to this he served as the ambassador to croatia from 2018 to 2020 and deputy high commissioner to sri lanka next 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 is farmers lost over 3.8 trillion dollars over the 30 years time period correct this is because of various upgradation this is because of various disasters right and various funding that was provided to them because of various agriculture production disasters so all these factor contributed and in the past 30 years a data was released that stated that farmers have globally lost over 3.8 trillion dollar right this data was released by united nations fao that is food and agriculture organization they released a report which is the first ever global estimation of the impact of disaster on the agriculture production and as per the report over the past 30 years that is from 1991 till 2021 this data was released and in this it stated that due to various disasters the total amount that was lost by farmers is almost 3.8 trillion dollars and roughly globally this averaged to around 123 billion dollar every year the amount is being lost by farmers this value is equivalent to 5% of the global agriculture gross domestic product that is nearly 300 million tons of accumulated losses per year right and this data was released by which organization united nations food and agriculture organization where is the headquarter of unfao it is in rome italy correct and it was in 1945 that this was established correct next and here the disasters where it includes floods droughts insect infestations storms disease and wars next is homework section first which union ministry introduced tradable green credit card special program next aboriginal and torres strait islanders are the indigenous citizens of which country third the uk government has collaborated with which indian state for its smart city smart district project so these are your three homework question i want to see maximum participation of students in this homework section so that's all for the day friends thank you and have a nice day that's all for the day friends i hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the youtube channel as well as apart from youtube channel you can go and follow us at affairs cloud telegram channel and if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application you can contact us on the number provided that is 7677333862 apart from this friends you can follow us on the facebook as well as on instagram handle that is affairscloud_official 
In the end friends, if you use a code that is Vikas10, you will be getting an additional extra 10% discount by using this code Vikas10. Also, if you have any problem regarding the course purchase, any problem regarding to our application, you can contact us on the mobile number that is 9677333862. And if you want to mail us, you can also mail us on support at the rate of affairscloud.com. And I assure you that our representative from us will be contacting you soon and resolving your issue.